So this is a dead battery here. It's from an electric bike. It's the version 2.0 white step-through bicycle. And I have a second bike, a black version 3.0 high bar. And since the angles are different on the batteries, I couldn't really change them. But I did take this battery out and found it read zero volts. Completely dead, actually 0 0.2 volts. So this video is going to show you how this battery is physically connected inside. Shown here is the battery end cap plastic assembly. You notice that it's, there's a pull lever on the left hand side. You can pull it out of the bike. It makes it easier to get it out of the bike. And it's actually marked as a plus and there's a minus sign here and here. And that refers to the two end pins. The left end pin is the plus, the right end pin is the minus, and the three pins on this socket are not used at all. They're not connected. This end cap also includes the charging pin on one side and the locking bolt pin on the other side. You simply remove these two screws to pop the entire battery switch assembly out of the end plate. Here's one of the screws shown down here on the actual switch. This switch has two white wires through a connector going back to the BMS. I don't have a schematic of the BMS, therefore I can only assume that this switch inhibits the BMS from connecting the battery to the electronics of the bike. In fact, I proved that on my other bike. If you turn the switch, turn the bicycle switch in the off position, then if you try to turn on the power, it blinks on and goes right off. So I think that's BMS doing that. Because my battery pack ended up with zero volts in all the cells, I suspect this inhibit switch is the only thing that disconnects, or I should say prevents the battery from deep discharging. Apparently the BMS doesn't look at the battery voltage when it comes to deep discharging, therefore it lets the battery run completely dead, which destroyed all the cells. So I suspect this switch here in this circuit on the BMS is what inhibits the electronics of the bike taking current from the battery. So make sure you always turn off this switch. The problem with turning off the switch is then the switch could fall, the key could fall out because the key comes out when the switch is in the off position. That's why most people leave it in the on position, but once again, it's very dangerous if it's going to kill your battery, leaving it in the on position. Always turn the switch off, remove the key and store it, or tape the key or something. Notice right here there's a black wire with a connector. On the right side of the connector goes to the charging jack on the end plate, the negative side of the charging jack. And the left side of this connector goes down to the BMS and enters right here. The positive side of the charging jack on the end plate goes to the positive pin on the battery end plate and then it goes from there back to the positive end of the battery. There's no interruption. There is that 30 amp fuse. That's the only thing that isolates that whole path. The negative battery pin on the end plate goes through a black wire over here and connects to the BMS right here. So that's how the negative side, the negative side is what's interrupted, interrupted by the BMS. The positive side is a direct connect and never interrupted. The BMS then connects to the battery pack negative terminal with this blue wire shown here. It comes out of the BMS right here and it connects to the battery pack cell number 13, negative side right here. So that's the complete path of the negative side of the battery. Here's another final picture showing the switch assembly, the plastic end cap, and the BMS, and how all the wires are going to connect all in one picture. So I think we beat this horse to death. This is what the battery pack looks like when it's out of its case and out of its wrapping. It has a very unusual configuration. I use numbers to sort this out. Notice that we're looking down on the top of the battery pack with just two layers deep. There's two layers. So on the left hand end here, these guys right here, there's two of them, and they're connected in parallel with these two here, which gives you four packs. And each cell is 2,500 milliamps, so four times 2,500 is 10 amp hours. And that's what the battery pack's capability is. Then this, so that's group, group one. Here we got two here and two here tied in parallel, that's group two. Group three, then it crosses over to group four, group five. Group six has these two in parallel. Group seven has these two in parallel. Group eight, these two in parallel. Group nine, these two in parallel, which is four. Group 10, 
these four in parallel, group 11, these four in parallel, group 12, and group 13. So that's how this battery is arranged. The BMS cell sensing is referenced to the plus side of the battery, which is shown right here. And then each sensor is tied to the negative side of that group. So there's 13 groups, so there's 13 sensor wires. So if you're going to replace these, make sure you keep track of where each sensor wire goes. It's always on the negative side of that group. These arrows point out where there's a metal banding strap which connects one battery to the next group of batteries. So on the left arrow at the top there, that's where the two one, one group batteries are connected the positive side together. And there's a black wire down at the bottom of that same left-hand battery which connects the bottom side of group one together. And then group six is the middle arrow and group 11 is the right-hand arrow. And then what's unusual is here, between group eight and nine, you find the bottom arrow. And it just continues the series path. If you look right here, you'll find a black wire. That black wire connects the negative terminals of group three to the pos positive terminals of group four. But yet there's a white wire. That white sensing wire for the BMS is actually sensing the negative terminals of battery group number three. So don't let that confuse you. On the other side of the battery here, you'll notice there's a blue wire, and that connects the negative side of group 13 over to the BMS, and that's where the primary current of the battery flows. So these little things are a little peculiar to look at. You might find it difficult trying to find a sense wire for battery pack group number 13. It should be on the negative side of the batteries, but it isn't. Instead, it's on the positive side of group 12 batteries, which is the same electrical connection. So always keep your eye out for these little irregularities, which are electrically correct, but they look weird to look at them in the battery pack. And last but not least, we have a temperature sensor, which senses the temperature of the batteries to prevent overheating the batteries during charge. And that's shown right here. So now let's talk about replacing these cells. The original battery pack had 2,500 milliamp hour batteries, which required four for each group. And the battery number is an LR1865. And Amazon just looked for 1865-2500. Problem is, four of them cost $29.95. That's one pack. We need 13 packs, $389, so that's not reasonable. You can buy a new pack for $300. So instead, I'm going to replace these four batteries in each group with a single battery, which is a 18650 found on Amazon. It's 9,900 milliamp hours per battery. So in other words, we're 9.9 .9 amp hours by just buying 13 batteries. And you can buy 16 batteries for $61.18. So the 18650 is what I'm going to use. It'll be one-fourth the weight. There's only one-fourth the size of the batteries. If they're the same weight, I don't know that yet. Anyway, that's my, my approach to repairing this battery pack. I did mention earlier that all these cells measured zero volts and they wouldn't take a charge except for four. The group number three, those four took a charge. All the rest of them are flat, dead, and damaged from being left at zero. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll make a separate part of this video when I actually install these 13 single cell 9.9 .9 amp hour batteries.